that hot glue is pretty much set up. The old trick I use for my push rods is landscaping flags. You can buy a whole bundle of a hundred of these for about twelve bucks. Well, with the inflation now, probably about fifteen. I have a video on it, along with the landing gear video, which you can go to. If I remember, I'll put it in the link. So there's our push rod. First, we got to put our servos in, so we can do that. I pulled these out of a older airplane I don't fly anymore about out of glue with my glue stick so I'm just gonna put a little bit usually yeah let's do it the other way no let's do it that way Okay. Fill one side up full of glue like that. And I already know where I want it. Weight wise. This one kind of goes under that support that we left out. Bulkhead. Whatever you want to call it. And so we'll run this one. That one I think is my elevator on the other plane. It doesn't really matter which one it ends up being. So go ahead and stick the other one in there too, just a little further forward. I'm putting a bigger motor on this one, so I'm not going to get too carried away on putting stuff forward because it's going to be, be a lot heavier than the other motor on the other plane. I have a 2200 KVA, but it's an A2212. 6T 2200, so we'll see how that works out. Now you can see these are 9 gram servos, there's plenty of room in there for them. So we're going to use this one for our elevator, which means our rod's going to come down and out under this side. So we need to cut a slot for that rod. Somewhere right around here. Time to change the blade on this. And it may need to go further back. I may need to widen it a little bit, but it's that there. You can slide this right on in, like so, and right on up there. It'll go to either one, but I'm going to keep it on this side. I'll put a Z-bin on this end here, and I'll put a clevis on this end, on this end here. So I'm going to grab my clevises and get on that. Alright. I've bent my Z-bin. Placed it on the servo inside here. I'm going to put my screw back in so I don't lose it. Maybe I already lost it. Now it's on the table somewhere. There it is. Always important to put these little bitty screws back in. Just for that reason. It was right on the edge of the table.
the back of the fuselage, not to the part I wanted. So. There we go. You can put it straight out of the back of the fuselage, but then you got to carve a bunch, bunch of foam out of the tail end, and I don't really want to do all that. All right, that's better. So I order these, a bag of these, I think 20 of them come in a bag. They're just real simple clevises, real cheap ones. You don't even have to, there's no screws, you can glue them if you want. I usually do. So we're going to line that up, our elevator is pretty much level, just right there. Take our knife. Poke it through. Goes in like so. And on the top side, you put the back plate on it. And they stay on there pretty good. I haven't had any of them fail on me yet. Just like that. And then you take the other cheap clevis. They have little set screws in them. I always do the set screw. Boy, that one's real cheap. They didn't even put a hole in it. They have set screws, but I also glue into the push rod once I know it's where it's going to stay. And for these push rods, you have to drill this out a little bit. So I'm going to drill that out. But before I do that, I can go ahead and place it on here and get my length. So make sure your elevator is somewhat in the level position because your servo is. You can hold it up there with your fingers. I got big fingers so it's harder for me. Mark it with a sharpie. Always mark a little extra. Like so. Take your wire cutters or whatever you have to cut rods with. These are pretty easy to cut. Man, just like so. Now I'm going to drill that out and then put it on there and set the screw. And then your elevator is hooked up and ready to roll. Alright. So I went ahead and got that on there, all set and tight. Now, what I like to do, so I don't have any right here next to me, I get a little drop of your super glue, foam save, regular super glue, it doesn't matter. Put a little drop inside the control horn right there on the rod and then hold it up like so, so it runs down in that, in that plastic fitting. And that'll extra help secure it. So it shouldn't come off at that point. And that's our elevator. Done deal. Alright, our tail's dry. Something we need to do to that right away. As you can see, you can't put it on there like that. Your elevator's not going to go up very far. So we're going to cut, cut a little bit of an angle. My dog stepped on it while it was drying on the ground and dented mine up. But 
You cut it at an angle like so. That's perfect. Bug zapper's going crazy today. Let's get our little clevis or connectors. Control horn out. That's going to go on this side. So it's going to be like that. And I always mount with the flat part forward. So you can do that right now. Before you even put the tail on, it just makes it easier. I think it does anyway. That way, we're going to glue our tail in and we're really we're going to bring it back. where it almost holds it in there, just like that. Pinches it between the, the fuselage. So you wanna get it right there. That'll work. So you want it something just like that. And of course you're gonna to wanna to get it straight and that actually is holding it perfectly, believe it or not. I'm going to go ahead and take it out and put my glue in all the way down. You can gob it in there all you want. And just take your scrap. This a little bit good spills out like it did. Hold it up. You can use a triangle and get fancy, but if you got decent eyeballs, line of sight works just fine. That looks pretty damn good. When we put our top skin on, we're going to slot the skin so the skin slides on like that. That'll also give it a lot more strength. I probably should have test fit this first and put this clevis a little bit higher. It'll be fine where it's at, but if I would have done a little bit higher, it would have wouldn't have to bend the rod so dramatically and once we put this skin on it's going to be real close to the surface of that piece of skin so I'll just make my skin go back to about halfway that way I don't have to worry about it now this rod you have to bend pretty special Z in for the front part. Like that. And then you know, slides through the hole there, like so. Now, this one actually. I don't think we're going to have to make the bend up, uh, well, maybe a little bit. We want it down in the fuselage right here. So you're going to do a little bend up. So it's down in there now. Now it's down in the fuselage. Then you want your other bend. Like that. That's all you got to do. Now when you put your skin on here, you're just going to cut a little slot for it. And you're going to do your clevis just like we did the last one. So I'm going to get all that buttoned up and then we'll get to making this skin here.
Well, I got that all done. It's not snapped on there tight yet because we're going to have to move it. So, I do my top skins with this really thin dollar store foam. This is the only piece that I have left, believe it or not. So, definitely need to buy some more. So I'm just going to zip the really ugly pieces of this off. And then, I'm going to measure about half of my tail there because I don't want to go all the way back. Looks like I want to go back about two inches. So I'm going to make my groove for the tail so we can slide it on there two inches and a quarter inch about the width of the foam like that. So I'm going to take that off while I fit this piece. That's perfect. So it's almost perfect length. I'm going to take some off. About here. You can measure this and get all fancy and whatnot, but you don't have to. about perfect we'll definitely cut it straight but so I do that and I just do this all the way down the model and pull it off Bug zapper is really going crazy. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut across this crease that's in the foam. It'll be a little short, but it'll, at least it'll be straight. And there's your skin. Actually, it's going to go that way, I think. And bam. Fits perfectly. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cut a hole. Pretty good one. You gotta give that push rod to see a place to pop through. Wow, that's, that's good. Now we'll probably edge it out a little bit more. But boy, that's, once you glue this on, that's going to go right through it and move the rudder back and forth. And that's it, man. That's all you do on that. So... I'll get this painted 
I'll make a little bitty piece for across here and up here. But once you get that push rod in, you can go ahead and put this back on. What you cut a long time ago, remember? We're going to put that back on there and then glue that for a minute. All right. Well, I got my top glued on. And by making it short like this, I was able to be able to unscrew the top of the servos there so I could get my servos centered up, which I just did. I got it on mine as mini red, is what I'm calling this little one. So we got up, down. It's rubbing on the side, so it makes a little noise, right? There. So those all set up and work good. Kind of see down there how they're sitting in there. Now it's time to make this little back cover and our top hatch and our front one screen. Put the motor on. That's about it. All right. Well, I got started on my patch here. Just a piece of foam. It's cut square. I have old hinges. If you don't have a hinge, you can actually just go ahead and glue this piece on and glue your windscreen on and when you do your battery, you just put your battery in where the wing goes before you fly it. And then you put the wing on and you're good to go because the battery sits between here and here in between here and you'll be able to reach in here and push it back and forth however you want it you don't have to put a hatch on but I'm doing it just use a little hinge like so so it'll come up and down then I cut popsicle stick to put here and I'll drill a hole, put a screw and a little piece of wood that swings down and holds this down. So I'm going to go ahead and paint all this and then get it all set up. And I'll come back when, when I'm putting the latch on. Well, I got my pieces painted. And I went ahead and used two glue on my finger. Use two popsicle sticks right here just to stay in the, the realm of most people. That's what they're going to have is something like that. So right here, I used a servo horn that I don't need. Your servos come with three or four of them. I just cut it down. I obviously drilled my first hole a little too high. So I re-drilled it cut it down and that's what I use for my little latch now it opens right up still gotta hook up the leads to the motor but I went ahead and mounted that on there she's just about done I gotta get the landing gear on there next so if you're gonna put a landing gear on yours Go watch my video, it explains how to make these landing gears. I haven't gone to the hardware store and gotten more of this aluminum, but you can find it over in the, the aluminum bin is what it was in really, where they keep pieces of window parts and stuff like that. You'll find this kind of aluminum there. It's one inch thick, or wide I mean, and I don't know how thick it is, about a sixteenth. Bin's real easy, 
go watch my video on how to make one of these and how to make the wire gears. It's there in my library. But it's almost finished up and almost ready to go fly. All right, something I should have done before I put my windscreen on and my back window is put my barbecue skewer through for the wing rubber band hold downs. So we're gonna do that now.